Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. My name's Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour. And we typically work on projects from beginning to end in the evenings here. However, tonight is Finish It Friday. And Finish It Friday is uh, happens for us on the first uh, the first Friday of every new month and it is the first Friday of November so I uh, finish it Friday so what that means is we take a project that's been sitting around that might be in a drawer somewhere and we get it out and we work on it just for this one hour a month to just try and move it along a little bit further and we've done this for a few months now and it's really helped me push projects past the finish line. So uh, hopefully tonight will be another one of those. Uh, tonight I am going to starch and block uh, this doily that I crocheted up when uh, I started it when I was on vacation uh, in August about then and uh, just have been working on it while watching TV in the evenings and stuff. Uh, I've tucked in all the ends to it, uh, all the different colored threads, and all I have to do here now is starch it and that's going to make that's just going to and, and block it that's going to stretch it out really well and it should be sturdy like when i hold it like this it'll all because of the starch it will just all stand up really nicely and it'll allow us to uh, with all these cute little nubbins in the edging we will pin all those down so that they're all just perfect so that is the plan for tonight I have not done this in ages, uh, so we'll see how it goes. I'll kind of show you what I got going on here uh, for this. So, all right, I'm going to flip you around and we'll get going. Okay, so I, you see, I can, I got a towel and I've clamped it to the ends of my table here. Uh, I think that's probably the best I can do for, um, to, uh, for starching. I did not pin down the sides. Ideally, these would be clamped down too, but um, we're gonna just do the best best I can with this little uh, towel here. Uh, I think they they do make actual like foam pieces to do blocking on top of, but you know, I'm using what I got. I got this towel here. Um, I thought we'd give that a go. So I need to just starch this first, but you can already see. So here's it unstarched. We got, it's, it's kind of like bubbling up here. It's very loose. Once it's starched, it will get stretched all the way out like that. And you'll start to see all the little designs coming through. So that's my goal. So we are going to, I have my pins here. We are going to just pin like crazy tonight. So I'm going to get a little bit lower so I can see your guys' comments. Um, but yeah, so that is the plan. We're going to start in the center and just kind of spread out. We'll put pins just everywhere. And the other thing, this will let me, this will allow me to go through all of my pins. I've been complaining about my pins for so much. Some are just too big. Some are just bent. I ordered some new pins, so I'm hoping this is an opportunity for me to clear out the pins. And once I put them back, I'll only put back the ones that I like and I'll just toss all the other ones. It's time. All right, so I got a, a bowl here, and I have I have my straight up concentrated stay flow liquid starch. Uh, let's shake this up. Um, this is kind of I've had this forever, so hopefully it's okay. It feels liquidy still. Um, I'm gonna just pour this into the bowl. Uh, let's let's start with about that much. Let's see if we can soak this. I'm doing straight starch because I do want this to be really, um, really solid when we're done. So I am not watering it down or anything. So I'm going to coat this entire piece. I might need a little bit more starch. It's getting sucked up right away. But I want this whole piece kind of soaking in the starch. And this is a, this is a crazy amount of starch, but like I said, I want this thing to be like stiff super stiff when we're done. Make sure all the little points are in. I'm going to put a little bit more um, starch in there. Man, the smell of this kind of, I don't know, smells like grandma's a little bit with the, with this starch, I think. 
this must be what she used for all her doilies as well. Oh, it's it's stay flow starch. You know, I didn't put a link to the starch. I didn't think I didn't think to do that, but it, it's the one in the big blue container, stay flow concentrated liquid starch here. Um, this is really the only thing I use it for. <laughs> I uh, so I mean I've probably had this jar for for years. All right, we're pretty soaked up here, so let's let's just um, double check, just feel through each thing. I want every little nubbin to be pretty well starched through, so that the edging is really crisp. That little one could use a little bit more. Okay, I think we're good. So I'm gonna just squeeze this out. We got all that goo. So we don't actually have a lot, a lot left over. And this is all water-based, so you know, I'll just throw this in the dishwasher and it should be fine. Okay. We're squeezed out, so I'm gonna set this to the side. We'll just kind of lay this down, get started here. Not really sure which is the front and back. Alright, um, I have a little bit of I have a little bit of water here. I'm just gonna, I just have that just to kind of wash my hands off um, so they're not totally full of starch when we get started here. And then I'm just gonna use the towel here to kind of dry my hands. So that's the only reason for that. So, all right, let's get going here. So I'm gonna start from the center. So let's just um, kind of stretch that out a little bit. I do want it to look like a circle, so I'm gonna pin so it looks like a circle. Let's just start by throwing a pin in there. We are just gonna pile this guy up with pins. There, just like that. And now, I when I crocheted it, it kinda wanted to curve a little bit, so I'm gonna try and straighten out all these lines too. So let's just, um, like from the center, let's just take one of these lines, straighten it out a little bit, and we'll throw a pin in there. We might have to adjust these a little bit, but you know, we're just getting started. Ooh, I gotta go in and out, it looks like. Get the hands a little drier. Ah, uh, Carla, I think this should probably just take overnight to dry. I don't think it'll take all that long. It's kind of like Elmer's glue a little bit. All right, I'm just gonna kind of radiate all this out from the center and just kind of pin as I go. And again, we may have to adjust here and there. But we're getting a start. Are these rust proof pins? I am not sure, but I hope so. I didn't I didn't think about that. Um, I these these ones with the, I think these, um, the ones with the glass top, I think those are just steel, steel pins. I think those are, um, those are rust proof. Um, I got some other pins in here that we'll probably have to use too. Those are the ones that I really hate, these um, ones with the black and white tops. Um, those, I don't know, I'm not sure I've used those for, for this process before, so we'll just have to Hope that those are okay. We'll use up all the um, glass top ones first. So you can already see we're kind of stretching it out here. So this might take a while. Like uh, hopefully, I mean, <laughs> I'm hoping we get this done in the amount of time that we have this evening, but this is one of those things that you just keep pinning. And like I said, once we get to the little little tops, all every single one of these is going to need a pin to hold it in place. So <laughs> it'll be a bit of a process here tonight, but I, it, it's worth it. Because look, as I stretch this out, look at all this detail that you can start seeing now. Um, you know, all these lines kind of moving up. I mean, you don't see that when it's all bunched up together like this. So that's that's what we're going for. We're going for nice and stretched out with um, pretty shapes and everything.
and we're just gonna keep kind of radiating out and pinning. I'm gonna try and not use tons and tons of pins. But I do want to get these shapes pretty. Oh gosh, yeah, these black and white pins I just don't like. So let's try and use these other ones first. You made many of these, Suzanne? Yeah, so I've I've really only used this pattern. This is the pattern that my um grandma used all the time. So she has tons and tons of doilies like this. Um, I'm going to get around the side here. And uh, and I think it's just a pattern from, you know, like a little crochet magazine that she would get in the mail or something. Um, it's, it's nothing special. I don't, I, um, you know, don't know what the copyright is for that stuff, but I did put a link, uh, a couple links in this post of doilies that are similar that are that there's patterns for on on like Ravelry and stuff. So if you're interested in a, doing a pineapple doily or something, um, there's some ones that look pretty similar there. And there's actually one that I put a link to. I think it's bright pink that one, but they have a little bit different. Um, they don't have like these these points at the top. They have like these kind of pretty arches. And I I wanted to try. I think my next one maybe I'll try doing like that. I might need to wash my hands in that water again. Fingers are getting kind of slippery and gooky. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to do that. There. Get a little bit of the starch off. But look how much it grew already. Just like it just spread out um, from, from just pinning it already. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this yet. I just kind of like making them. <laughs> um, I actually, Jennifer, I think I might want to try and frame it or something. This would be a, a great, oh, a cushion cover mounted on a backing fabric. Yeah. And you know, like look at it on the white, like it's kind of pretty on the white. I have some white linen that it might be neat to try and mount it to. I was kind of thinking, um, I'm not positive on that yet. Uh, and I have a pile of other ones too that are just sitting around. I just, I like literally just like making them. And I have a few of my grandma's as well. So ideally what I'd like to do is get a couple of them. Um, um, or like I, I have one that I made and uh, uh, out of my grandma's thread that she had. Um, and I have one that she actually made. I would love to get those both framed or try and figure out how to frame them myself. But I don't know, I, I, I've never really framed in anything professionally. So I don't really know what that process would be like. Um, but I'd love to be able to kind of in one of those shadow boxes, just kind of like a little shadow box frame uh, um, both and have them uh, next to each other, I think would be cool. Oh, you have thousands of these, Jennifer. Oh, funny. That's Geez, hours and hours and hours of time. I'm just kind of going around the edge. I may have to take take these guys out and just even things out a little bit, but we'll see how it goes. This is actually um, a smaller one. Well, this is actually so the pattern that I have for this there comes with it comes with like a big version and a small version, uh, and the small version only has two pineapples. Uh, this is actually the big version, so it has three. It has this row, this row, and this row. But because I uh, crocheted this with, with such tiny thread, um, it actually, the doily itself is actually pretty small, even though it's I did the large size of it. So I, I crocheted this with 12 weight thread. So, you know, like our normal... We've used that for sewing thread before. Um, it's it's just a it's a little thicker thread, um, but you can actually run it through the sewing machine. 
it's for like decorative stitching. And I just, I thought the colors were pretty and I had a bunch of them. So um, I thought, I wonder if you can crochet with this. So that's, that's what this project was about. I knew I needed a project for a, a vacation we were taking. And uh, I thought this would be perfect. It would travel super small and easy. So I thought it was kind of, kind of fun. All right, I'm gonna pin this pineapple. See like how I'm stretching this one out. I want them kind of pretty and stretched out like that versus this one, which is kind of um, scrunched in. So all of these, I'm gonna have to kind of yank on a little bit and see if I can get them. I might have to get my applique pins out. That might, those might work a little bit better than these big pins, but we'll just, we'll keep going and see how it goes for a little bit. I am kind of stretching the towel a little bit underneath, but I don't know. I think we'll just do the best that we can here. Get in there. All right. So I'm still just trying to stretch this around and ultimately I want this to be, to be circular <laughs> as well. So we'll have to um, tweak and, and pull. Um, it's, well, is it complicated is the question to, to make one of these. I mean, not necessarily. It's just a matter of following the pattern. And so, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to just make one of these on my own, um, like just from my brain, I would, I'd have to follow the pattern. And it, it, you do have to get used to stitching with um, all the small little, um, like a tiny crochet hook and a small thread and, and all that. So, you know, there's, there's that involved. So there's, you know, a couple little barriers, but I actually really enjoy it. So I think for this one, it only used, I think it used like a chain stitch, which is a basic crochet stitch. Let me get a little bit higher up for you guys. Um, now that it's spreading out a little bit. Um, and, and it uses a double crochet, a single crochet and a triple crochet or a treble. So all of those are pretty basic uh, crochet stitches. So really, if you have some patience and uh, follow a pattern, it's doable <laughs> for sure. I'm gonna remove this pin here. It's not doing much for us anymore. We're gonna go up here. Six. I know there's like six nubbins per side. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so I want to kind of center them. So this is just one of those parts of the process that takes time, but it, it's so worth it when it's when it's done. I mean, it's really coming together here, but yeah, it, it's just it takes time to stretch all this stuff out. It's getting a lot bigger though than I thought it was going to, so that's kind of fun. It always feels like an accomplishment though when I when I finish up one of these doilies because they do take a while. I mean, this is thousands of stitches. I like how it turned out. I'm just gonna start going around and pulling these these guys down, I think. And I think we'll go for 80% good too. I won't, um, won't uh, pin forever and ever. 
but let's get all these these um kind of phalanges down i'm just trying to i'm trying to not do all one side i'm trying to kind of go back and forth so it doesn't um so it stays kind of round it's bunching a little here but i think that's more of the the um towel behind it so i'm not going to worry about that i'm just going to keep stretching these guys out Going around the whole piece and making sure, yep, making sure that all of these uh, all of these points are stretched. But then we do need to go around and I need to pin every single one of those little nubbins. Okay, we got two more over here, and I think that's it. Still try and keep it, keep it circular. When it dries, everything should stay just how it is because um, of the starch. So we could iron it when we're done, but I don't think I need to. I just, if I just let this dry, it's going to be perfectly fine, I think. Okay, how are we looking? You know, I think it's good enough. I mean, we, I could go around and kind of tweak and pull on, you know, just the different shapes a little bit. Like, I don't think I need that there anymore. But I think, you know, I think it's going to be fine. I mean, I could just go back and keep stretching it out, I think. But I don't know. I think why bother with all that? Let's just get it done. So now I'm going to just go around... I'm going to go around the edges and I'm going to pin, like literally pin every single one of these little um, edging nubbins. I mean, it, it seems crazy. Like it's a lot of, it's a lot of work, all these stupid little nubbins, but it does make it look pretty when it's done to have each one of these pinned. And it helps stretch those things out too. So I'm just kind of pinning it in and then pinning it into the fabric behind. I could probably get rid of that one now that it's pinned. And it helps, it helps shape our final pineapple here. She used blue powder starch mixed with water. Oh, that's interesting. I bet you it's, um, that's probably pretty similar to this, this stay flow starch in the blue bin. But she started with the center pieces and oh and starts as she went at starched as she went there this is the part that's going to take a while just going around every single one of these nubbins but look even i don't know if you guys can tell um quite yet but this is really going to shape shape these by pinning the nubbins it's going to look really pretty i think This is where the long, long hard work comes. <laughs> Besides the actual crocheting of it. I never really look forward to this part just because this is so tedious. Like stitching down or like pinning down every single one of these but you know it is the last step before it's it's finished so that's always nice but i want to get down here and show you guys just the difference between pinning these and not just have to finish this one so there's 11 11 um of these trying or of these points that I have to do this too. So this will take this will take some time. But here I'm gonna zoom down here in a sec to, to show you guys. But here, look, so all right, so look at so this is the one that I just pinned. 
look how pretty each one of those points is all stretched out and like look at that compared to these which are just you know these these little points here so now you can really see the decorative edging um, it's really nice but yeah look I have to pin down all that which takes forever I probably don't need this anymore either because it's we're stretched out from those pins so yep so now we'll just go around all these and do this and you maybe I'll just stay I'll just stay right here close up um, so you guys can see a little bit better but that's all we're doing here it makes a big difference though I think at least one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six. So I'm just making sure that, you know, the center is um, kind of in the middle of that. Yeah, I don't, Deborah, I don't actually have any plan whatsoever um, what I'm going to do with this when I'm done. <laughs> Isn't that horrible? I actually have a stack of these in my office just, just laying there with no purpose whatsoever. Uh, I just... I just find myself every year or so I end up, I end up making one. Um, it just is like the time for this type of project, just some slow stitching and eventually it gets done. And I don't know, there's something super enjoyable about this kind of crochet for me. And so I've just been accumulating these doilies and they're all the same. I, I always do this same design every time, but I always try different different things with them like this one you know I'm doing it with that 12 weight thread I've never done that before and uh, um, you know just the changing of the colors I've never done that before either oh mounted on a circle piece of wood painted white that'd be kind of cool yeah, yeah like a mandala yeah I kind of have it in my head <laughs> I told I told my husband that he should he should start this as a new hobby. I, I, uh, I told him he should start, um, like framing. He should start, um, learning how to frame things nicely, like picture frames, like cutting, cutting the, the mitered edges and getting it all together and the, the mounting on the board and, and what, what have you, whatever you need to frame things really pretty. <laughs> I told him he should have, that should be his new hobby. Um, <laughs> but maybe I'll, maybe that should be one of my new hobbies. Cause I would love to, you know, there's so many fun things just uh, even around the house, like goofy things that we find places or whatever, that would just be cool. If you frame them, put them, stick them in a frame, then all of a sudden it, it becomes artwork. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I need to pick up, pick up framing. Would be permanent as it would have to be um, glued. Yeah, so this, you know, the starch isn't permanent, but if I don't get it wet, then it'll stay like this for a while. So, I mean, and even if it, even if this, um, you know, it, it, it won't be like super stiff forever, but the act of basically blocking it. So um, the act of, you know, pulling out all of these little nubbins, all of that, it's going to keep, even if it loosens up a little bit, like relaxes a little bit, it's going to keep all of these points. It's going to have the memory of being stretched out like this. So, I mean, if I got the whole thing wet again, um, then uh, yeah, then I'd be starting from scratch again, which would, ugh, that'd be not fun. But um, if it just stays dry and, you know, if I handle it a lot and it becomes looser, it's still going to keep, um, it's still going to know that I've shaped it like this. All right, let's keep going. But there we go. We got two done here, so it, it's going to take a little while yet. Um, oh yeah, if I mounted it on board, so that's, that's what I'm trying to figure out. So there's this, um, I'm trying to make it not shake, but there's this uh, embroidery or this sewing artist that I like. Uh, oh, I think her name is Meredith. Um, oh gosh, what's her last name? Like Wood Woodlow or something? Oh gosh, I I don't think I have that quite right. I'll have to look it up. But she does this machine embroidery. It's like machine painting, and she does different um, different like plants and stuff, and then she mounts them. She frames and, and mounts them. But the way that she does it is they kind of float off the surface a little bit. So I think she pins them 
to like foam board, but because they're floating a little off the surface, when light hits it, it does like these pretty shadows and stuff. I thought something like that would be really neat for this. So I could mount it directly on like a backing board, or even if it's covered, like I could, I could put linen over a backing board and then um, just like maybe just tack it. Like if I were gonna do it directly on on the board, I would probably just tack it with a, like a little bit of thread. Kind of like how we're doing it with pins, I would just put a little stitch here and there to put it onto the backboard and then frame it. Otherwise, you know, I like the idea of like itty bitty pins and it could kind of float off the surface, but I don't, I don't really know how I would do that. But I could see just um, wrapping wrapping a backing board in like a pretty fabric, like the white linen or something that I was talking about. And um, then, yeah, just putting a stitch here or there to, to keep it there. And that'd probably be good enough, especially if it was behind glass or something. I don't know, all, all questions that I want to figure out. <laughs> like I said, they've just, I just have a stack of them in my office and that's, that's where they live now. <laughs> I don't know why, I just, I just like making them. All these dumb black and white ones, I don't like those ones. When I get my new pins, I want to just toss all of those because I just, they're thick and they don't go in and out of fabric easily. I don't like them. All right, got that side. So this is gonna take a while yet. So if if we get to like the hour mark and I'm still doing this, we'll probably call it an evening and I'll just um I'll just stay here and, and finish this up tonight. Cause this might be this might be a two hour job, not a one hour job. <laughs> I don't know. So slow and steady. What if when you're mounting you put on a canvas backing a basic frame? Yeah, so that's yeah, something like that I think might might do the job. Like I want to cover whatever the backing is with some fabric or, or I could, or it could be like directly on a, a canvas, like a pre-mounted or pre-stretched canvas or something. I don't know. And then, um, yeah, go about it that way. It's just, I never got that far in the process yet to, to think that all the way through. But one of these days, that's going to just, that's going to be um, one of my finish it Fridays, one of these days, or just a finish it weekend is going to be, I'm framing these guys no matter what, and we're going to figure it out. <laughs> I just haven't looked too much into it. I have a hunch that might be an expensive little task to frame these all up nicely, and I think maybe that's a reason I haven't really putzed around with it too much yet either. All right, well, this is our fourth one, so we're, we're going. Like I said, I think there's 11, 11 of these, so. It's gonna take the time it takes, but we'll have another project done, which will be, which will be nice. Relatively done. <laughs> another doily to add to the pile, that's, that's what we'll, this will be when we're done. I can tell that the, the starch is drying a little bit, but I don't think it'll dry enough that I won't be able to keep doing this the entire time. I think it's still gonna take like a full overnight to really, to really um, do. You used to make frames like this with, oh, fabric that you like to get a, Quick artwork to hang. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to. You guys are giving great suggestions, and I, and I know I'm missing a bunch of them. So I will. Um, I'll definitely read through the comments uh, when I'm done here. To maybe it'll be sooner than later that I get get these framed. And the thing is, I mean, like, it would be cool. I could just put these under, like, a glass table or something. Ooh, this has got to balance out. Um, or something. But I don't know. I don't know if I actually like doilies as decoration. <laughs> it just it feels like maybe a, just a little cluttery for me. Um, but the idea of them up on the... Ouch hit a pin, um, of them up on the wall as art, I, that's a little bit more appealing to me than them as, like, home decor stuff. So I don't actually use them as actual doilies. Alright, let's take a peek. I'm going to rotate around here a little bit. But yeah, it's, it's stretched out a ton since we started. And in theory, maybe, maybe when I'm done, I can like pull on the towel, tweak the towel a little bit so it is perfectly circular. Because this towel isn't perfect. I, I mean, ideally, this wouldn't be moving at all, right? But we're doing the best we can here. Oh, this is tedious, though, each one of these little nubbins, but it, it really is worth it. I mean, look at the difference. Look at look at this side compared to this side that's not done over there. I mean, it's totally, it's a different shape entirely. I think it'll be awfully pretty though. So if I do frame a few, unfortunately this will not be the first one in the running. Like I said, I got a whole pile of these and there's there's um, two in particular that I would like to um, do first. And one is one that my grandma actually made for me. Um, I wanna frame that one. And then there's one that I made out of all her old um, floss. So uh, I acquired a bunch of her uh, just crochet threads, the same threads that she used um, all the time. And I just um, started using those up. And uh, um, like one of them had, one of the spools had a tiny little um, rolled up um, ball of green embroidery thread just hidden in the in the cone and I stitched that into into the doily and stuff and I don't know I just really really like that one that I that I made out of her thread so I would frame I would frame the one that she actually did herself and then the one that I did with her thread I would frame those two so that they can hang next to each other on the wall um, they're about the same size they're a little different size so I the frames would be, one would be slightly bigger than the other, which I think is kind of cool. I like that they'd, you know, I think it's just kind of a, le a neat little touch that the frames aren't perfectly the same. So that's, that's my vision of, of um, framing doilies first, is, is those two. And then I, then I have no idea what to do with the other ones. I could just keep framing them. That's why I need to become, like, a person who knows how to frame things, um, because... I could just keep framing them all and then I'd, I would have like an art show all of a sudden with all of these done. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, just from the amount of these. I mean, I actually haven't made a ton, but still, once they're framed, they magically are going to look fancy, <laughs> I think. 
So I don't know. I have a room full of framed doilies somewhere, which would be pretty weird, but still. Like I said, I just like making them. Oh yeah, on the front door, it'd almost be like a wreath on the door, that's true. Yeah, I don't know, the two on the, hanging up on the wall as art, to me that's, you know, will look like art. After that, I think it's just, they just end up looking like clutter um, in, at least in our particular house where I have drifts of clutter against every wall and I just have so many knickknacks. I just gotta, if I would go through everything and clean it up so I just don't have anything laying around, then I don't think doilies would look like, like clutter, but in my particular situation right now, I think if I actually had these, you know, under plants and, and whatever, um, it would just be overload for my brain. <laughs> so they need to be framed as, as art and I don't know how else I would be able to do it. Right now, like I said, they're sitting in a pile and that's that's where they're living. Have lived for, for years. Uh, not where I want them. I don't know, the more I talk about it though, the more I wanna get that frame going though. That's, it's not really honoring the work put in just Throwing it on a pile afterwards, I suppose. Yeah, I think when I'm done, maybe I'll try and tape tape this towel down a little bit just so it can, I can make sure that it, everything ends up being round. We're going pretty well. I, we're over halfway done. I just have five more to do here. So let's, um, I'll do this one up top here. Then I'll walk around and to the other side. I'll get a little higher. We're stretching it out again, so I gotta get a little higher again for you guys to to see. The comments are kind of covering it up a little bit on my end, but there we go. But it's it's pretty on the white. You can see um, see the gradient a little bit. Some of the gradients obviously don't work as well as others, but I don't know. It's kind of neat that it changes pretty quickly to this kind of rust color. I don't know. I'm having fun. I had fun with the. Um, we're stitching it. One, two, three, four, five, six. It'd be easier if there was an odd number of these nubbins and then I could just have one at the point, but they kind of come to two at the top. Oh gosh, like look at this pin, it is totally bent. I need to just throw all those out when I'm done here. Yeah, I think this will probably be dry pie tomorrow, tomorrow morning probably, probably won't take that long. I mean, I can already tell it's getting a little sticky, like it's, it's drying. I mean, it's definitely still wet. It'll be wettish for a while, but it's, it's drying. It's doing its job. <laughs> yeah, I could leave it out for Thanksgiving. This is very uh, Thanksgiving-y colors, isn't it? And I don't know what we're doing for Thanksgiving this year. I think it might just be me and the hubs this year. Maybe we'll make a turkey. Don't know. Let's see how it goes. This really is getting stretched out. Ah, it's pretty. I like it. Ugh, this is definitely the most tedious part, but it makes a difference.
It's one of those things. It's kind of the same reason, like, I think why, why some people don't like binding a quilt. It's just that you think you're done and then it's like, oh, I still gotta put the binding on. That's kind of how I feel. I mean, I actually like binding quilts, but like, that's kind of what this feels like. It feels like, oh man, I already did all the crochet and I'm still, still have to putz around and do this part. All right, I'm gonna walk to the other side here. This is definitely taking up more of the space than I thought it was going to though. All right, let's get this guy. I mean, I am pulling in on the the uh, towel quite a bit, but I think we'll be okay. We just have four more of these. Ugh, it's definitely gonna feel good to have have this done. I think this is a worthy finish it Friday. This is a, we're gonna actually finish something. Except for that I don't know what to do with it afterwards. Except for that, it's, it'll get done. I suppose I gotta take all these off first, but that'll be, that'll be the fun part. Yeah, nothing fancy. Get this done with some pins and a towel. All right, two more nubbins here. Uh, when I'm done with all these nubbins, I will um, just kind of go around and see if there's any tweaks I need to do, but I don't think. I don't think there'll be much to do. All right, um, three more here. We're definitely drying out over here, so I guess it's good we're moving. Uh, we're getting it all done right away. Moving quickly. Oh, Amazon has a 16 by 20 white shadow box frame. See, that'd be cool. Yeah, may, I'll have to do that. I'll have to kind of do a search. The trick is getting is going to be getting just the right size because this is this is over 20 inches now. This is we're at. I mean, this has got to be at least. I don't know, maybe 30 inches, 24 at least. Now that it's all stretched out. grabbing these very well anymore. I can tell I'm getting antsy. I just want to get these done. We got two more after this. But that's basically it. It'll be quite a change from where we started. Oh, these black and white ones. Get rid of them. Some of them I gotta go back and redo. Put one more over here. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm going to want to stretch these out a little bit. Man, and some of them are messing up a little bit. All right. Ah, two more. Let's get her done. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Devlin. Thanks, Gretchen. Yeah, I, I'm loving the colors. So I, these are from, uh, the thread is from Sulky. It's the Sulky, they're Sulky Petites, which is their 12 weight. So kind of like, you know, Orophil got, has um, their 12 weight thread and um, other places do. Um, the Sulky Petites are the uh, Sulky's company's version of 12 weight thread. And it's for decorative sewing usually, but the size looked just right for itty bitty crochet. Um, I think I used a size five tiny little crochet hook and it worked great. And I have a whole pile of it, a whole pile of, of this sulky thread. So I'm I'm tempted, you know, I don't want to start a whole nother doily because it's, it's a commitment doing these things for sure. But um, I have a bunch of other colors that would just, how these blend together. I have a whole nother set of colors that would blend together really well, like some purples and um, blues that would blend in really well together. So I kind of want to do another one, but... Then I stop myself because I'm like, yeah, do I really want to start another doily project right now? But I, I have more thread and I would love to do another one with um, just fun colors. Those could look, you know, then I could do another series of framed ones. Like this would be pretty next to a, another framed one with other colors. They could be like different seasons or something. Like this is spring into fall, maybe, and then I could do fall into into winter as another one. All right, we're on our last nubbin, you guys. I'm gonna get, get down here a little bit more so you can see again. We'll do our last nubbin, and then I will um, back out again to show you guys the final the final bit. Ooh, wow, yeah, we're drying out here for sure though. Which is great. We'll get these done and this can dry overnight. On Monday, when we're back here, I'll be sure to to show you this, um, to show you the, the finished um, starched and, and blocked piece. Then you can kind of see um, how stiff it is. It's not, it's not like glue, it's not like cement, um, so you know, there will be flexibility to it and everything, but you'll, you'll be able to see that you can still see each one of the nubbins just fine. Um, even though it's going to not be perfectly stiff and that's what we're going for. I mean, it's what we're really, we're really just blocking this really well is, is the goal here. And the starch is just nice because it adds that little stiffness to it. But yeah, I suppose you could do this with like glue too. Then it would be really, really stuck in the in its spot, which would be kind of awesome. I just never, you know, I've always done it with the starch before and I think that's what grandma used. And so I've just been doing it that way. But I suppose I should try some other things sometimes too. Oh, just two more. Maybe this is a, an hour long project. I could have putzed around a little bit more and kind of tweaked a little bit and, and I might still, I'll kind of show you guys where I'm going to tweak a little bit. But all of these nubbins are pinned now, thank goodness. So um, all I'm going to do now is just kind of double check that it's a round shape. So I'll, I'll back out and see if it's round, but there's like a few little bits like right here. This goes into this little line here and I want that to be centered on all of them. 
Um, some of them they're not so much, so I'm going to just try and shimmy that over. I think that'll just help, help just a tish design-wise, but here, let's get up high again. All right, there is the finished piece, basically. I'm just going to go around. Oh, ooh, it bit me! Bit me with those pins. Just going to go around quick. Shimmy these. We'll do a quick check on the center again to make sure that looks okay. Get over there. I should have probably done this before pinning them all, but there we go. What's happening now? All right, Ooh, this one maybe. All right, I think that's about as good as we're gonna get it. Um, I might um, try and stretch these edges a little bit, but at the same time, why bother? We might just, you know, it's kind of round enough. I think we'll just kind of leave it. So there we are. That is the doily. The um, um, I'm just gonna let this stay overnight. How are we in the middle? Still looking round? I think so. I have one little clamp sitting here. Let's just throw that down here. All right, there we go. Then you can see, um, you know, I, I put clamps on the table to kind of hold it in place and the pins, but it's gonna look pretty. I'm excited. So on, on Monday, I will uh, take these off and I'll um, I'll show you what it looks like when we're done here. So I'm gonna flip you guys around and we'll call it an, an evening here. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me again uh, for a Finish It Friday. Uh, this went a little faster, honestly, than I thought it would. <laughs> it is a lot of pinning all uh, to block something like this, all those, all those little edging nubbins. Um, but you know what? I think it's as good as we're gonna get it, and, and I'm excited. It's gonna be a finished project, so that'll be good. So I will get this, uh, I'll unpin it over the weekend. Uh, I'll, I, I think it'll be dry tomorrow, and I'll show it to you guys on Monday, the, the finished uh, doily. So thanks again, guys. Have a great weekend. Uh, remember, it is uh, the t we have a time change on Sunday, so keep that in mind uh, when you come back on Monday. I'll still be here at 8.30 p.m., central time that will just have shifted a little bit. So, all right, guys, have a great weekend and I'll see you Monday. Good night.